Russia's invasion of Ukraine has increased tensions across the Balkans involving Bosnia, Serbia, and Kosovo. I sat down with Bosnia and Herzegovina's new foreign minister, Elmedin Konakovic, to talk about how his country is navigating through some potentially treacherous political waters. I'm Frank Uciardo, and this is TRT World One on One. Bosnian Foreign Minister Elmedin Konakovic, thank you for joining us here on TRT World. Thank you for the invitation. It's my pleasure. How would you describe the current state of affairs regarding the Balkans, Serbia and Kosovo right now? How would you explain that? Uh, for us, that's really important issue, you know, because uh, now we all talk about regional stability, regional security and political stability. Uh, that issue between Serbia and Kosovo is historical problem on the Balkan. And I was actually optimistic because the last uh, meeting on Nohri that's actually um, that was held a few months ago and we were all optimistic and I, unfortunately after that meeting and, uh, nothing improved, it's even worse than it was before. We are all following the situation and uh, relations between Serbia and Kosovo and I hope that Vucic and Kurti will be leaders, will be strong enough to make some decisions for the futures, not only for the voters, you know, because that is really important issue for the regional stability which affect also Bosnia and Herzegovina. Would you characterize it as possibly dangerous? It is, you know, on Balkan uh, all political movements are dangerous, you know, you know that we had a lot of wars in the past, you know, it, it, it was, it was um, uh, hmm a bad part of our history and of course it, it, it's much better to have a dialogue to, to, to have some solutions to have compromise uh, and it's dangerous of course because there, there, there is enough uh, a lot of people actually creating some mess on Balkan and, and, and they are not happy to, uh, to, 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 to succeed in these political negotiations so I, I, I have to repeat I, I hope that Vucic and Kurti will be aware of situation we will be aware of this momentum we have all of us in, in the region of Western Balkans territory, unfortunately because of, of Ukraine, uh, the new approach from European Union regarding enlargement, so we, all of us, we have to do everything to, to, to use this opportunity and, and not to create any mess. It would be a fair statement to say that tensions have actually increased because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine? Uh, uh, historically, we had a lot of tensions even without this new aggression on, on Ukraine. But this new aggression on Ukraine has changed the whole world completely, you know. Unfortunately, and uh, uh, unfortunately uh, we, can, we can say we have a new chance in Bosnia-Herzegovina, especially uh, because of that aggression, aggression on Ukraine, uh, European Union realized that with too much uh, influence from Russia in this part of the world, it's also dangerous for them. So I think that was the main reason why Europeans now are considering Western Balkans as a future territory of European Union. And they stopped with the story about enlargement a, a, a few years ago only. On the other side, there is a lot of Russian influence uh, gen in general on, on, on this, this part, in this part of the world. Uh, you, we have also in Bosnia and Herzegovina Russian influence politicians connected strongly with the Russian regime, with Putin directly, my, our partner in, in, on, the, on the state level uh, in the Council of Ministers, Mr. Dodik and SNSD. They are proud uh, because of their connections with, uh, with uh, Putin. Uh, he went to Moscow, he awarded Putin a few weeks or a few months ago with some medal, you know. On the same time, we have all, all uh, common goals to deliver something from these 14 key priorities and to continue this travel to uh, Europe, this European path, you know. So it's complicated, but a lot of Russia influence. And Serbia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Montenegro also uh, is present for in, in not only in last years, I can say for decades. You, you have those um, religious, historical, traditional relations between Serbs on Balkan and Russian, Russian uh, President Putin and his regime. You know, I remember speaking to um, a survivor and a victim of some of the atrocities of the Bosnian War, and even up to current times, there's a lot of uh, unrest because of uh, injustices that have trickled down through the generations and years that have never been solved and people not brought to justice but still uh, living out their lives in that region. Yeah, of course, now we can say, because we can talk about aggression in Ukraine, of course, very loud, us Bosnians, you know, because uh, we had a problem in the 90s, it was aggression in our country, you know, Europe and all world was watching what is happening to us, you know, 
because they didn't act concretely and that it's it's not enough of justice in Bosnia and Herzegovina. You have many war crimes, war criminals actually uh, not prosecuted at all. You know, you have some of them actually prosecuted and liberated. You know, you have you have happenings that that actually they're not. That they didn't help, you know. Justice is important. That that's maybe that is a reason why uh, this this aggression on Ukraine is happening today because Europe was not serious enough during the aggression on Bosnia and Herzegovina. So on the on the other side, of course, we do understand and and we stand strongly with the people of Ukraine in defending their country, you know. And we can share we can share some some experience from our past that could be helpful really for Europeans. This is your first time at the United Nations in the General Assembly in your career, and you're here at a historic moment because you witnessed the speech by President Zelensky, a wartime president, before the General Assembly. Give us your impression. Uh, this is my first time. I'm on this position for seven months only. Uh, diplomacy is my new career, my new job, actually. I, this is for me first time to participate in this, uh, in this great event. Uh, we are, of course, following uh, President Zelensky and his team. Of course, we do. Uh, oh, it's important how Ukrainian will react, how will they defend their country, because they defend civilization, not only Ukraine. Ukraine, you know. Uh, it was, of course, emotional speech. It was speech with a lot of um, strong messages, and I hope uh, I would be the happiest man in the world to stop this war. Of course, because I was the soldier during the Bosnian War. I was minor, and I was defending my country. So I know what that means. You know, when you go to to, to some I don't know front front line, if when you go to the war, it's not it's not a joke. You know, you know, people are losing their lives. So we are we, we are supporting strongly the Ukrainian uh, leaders to 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 defend their country. I remember when you were just referring to the, uh, the countries involved in the tensions of the area during Zelensky's speech, he said Russia has almost swallowed up Belarus. What's your reaction? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Actually, we can see that President of Belarus is blindly following the politics of foreign and, 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 and intern politics of uh, Putin. So that, that, that's nothing new. Yeah, that, that, that's one more, one more dangerous place to live. You know, in the middle of these areas of political uncertainties, how important is it to have a good, solid, strategic relationship with Turkey? For us in Bosnia and Herzegovina, it's really important, you know. Turkey is one of the most important foreign partners for us, not only uh, in, in the field of economy. We are also strongly connected with uh, Turkey and uh, historical, in uh, like you know, we were a part of Ottoman Empire in the past, and there's you can see a lot of uh, signs actually from, from that time. And I have to say, I'm proud of the relations with the president of Turkey, Mr. Erdogan. I, I met my uh, colleague and my friend Mevlut Cavusoglu during the uh, my visit, first official visit to Turkey at the beginning of my mandate. Unfortunately, I went there because of horrible earthquake uh, in Turkey. I went also to that region who was, um, and I met there a few, three more ministers from the from the Tur Turkish government. So the relations are really good, and I think we can improve them still on the institutional level. I'm planning to visit uh, bilaterally uh, Turkey till the end of this year. I, I will meet tomorrow my my colleague Hakan Fidan, the new Minister of Foreign Affairs. So we showed, and it is really important, and we are proud of our relations. You know, given uh, that there are some murmurs in the region uh, that Russia is deviating from the Dayton agreements and the accords there, how prepared is Bosnia-Herzegovina for that to happen? Yeah, like I told you, they are using this part of the world to, 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 to put in some influence, you know, and to uh, having their own political goals, you know. They are strongly connected with few political polit politicians in, in this region. And they didn't help, you know, because they know the normal, the natural uh, path for Bosnia and Herzegovina is European Union. You know, we signed all these agreements with Europeans. Now we are, uh, they they granted candidate status to our country. You know, we, we are close to have to open negotiations with Europeans. So that's natural position for our country and Russians. They are doing all they can actually to stop Bosnia and Herzegovina on this path and to create some problems which are well known to, to the whole world. You know, I wanted to ask you about Dodik. He seems like he's really kind of drifting away from the NATO model. How does that affect you? Uh, NATO is a specific, specific story for Bosnia and Herzegovina. We, we cannot agree about NATO, I think. Two sides, let's say, like two parts of this coalition, we are strongly supporting the idea of 
uh, membership in NATO. If I have to choose, I will choose NATO before the European Union. But on the other side, we are a country of consensus. You know, we need to vote all of us for uh, everything. Like we cannot adopt a law. You have a level like um, House of Representatives and House of People. There is also a ethnical votes. So we need consensus to agree about this NATO. Uh, NATO pet for Bosnia and Herzegovina and Serbs in Bosnia, of course, they don't want to, they don't want to travel to NATO. They, 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 they want that kind of cooperation with NATO, NATO, like Serbia is doing. And on the other side, of course, like two other sides, we are really in favor of NATO. I hope the day will come really soon that we will all um, realize that is actually the first serious move that is a kind of a proof of political and security stability what that's really important for Bosnia for Bosnia and Herzegovina so for now Dodik and his 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 uh, as uh, his his members of his government actually they they don't support the NATO path can you give us an idea of where relations are with the hierarchy of the European Union and where you see that whole relationship going? Uh, I, I, I told him a few times, like they were sleeping Europeans, you know, for the last decade, you know, while Russians, China and some other big countries, they were doing their job on Balkan and Bosnia and Herzegovina especially. They put a lot of influence and then the Ukraine happened, I told you at the beginning. Like, you know, then they actually woke up and they understood that it can be a huge problem if you have Russian influence on the edge, on the border of Europe, Europe actually on the Schengen border with Croatia. Bosnia and Herzegovina has the longest border with Croatia. So they realized it can be a problem also for them. So for now, it looks like they are much, much, much more serious. On the other side, we are expecting them to announce this new enlargement approach, enlargement approach to Western Balkans territory, some um, approach to the common market, which is really interesting for us to have some opportunities. We, we named it like more integration before membership. Um, one more important thing is like the the political decision to open negotiations with Bosnia and Herzegovina after after a long period. So we are following situation. I know there will be some serious decisions in October, November till the end of this year. And that is the reason why we are actually in the middle of diplomatic of, of, uh, activities, you know, to, to tell the truth about Bosnia and Herzegovina, to, to propose some, some solutions for Bosnia and Herzegovina and strongly connected with, of course, our final destination, Brussels. Bosnian Foreign Minister Elmedin Kodakovic, thank you for joining us here on TOT World. Thank you very much for the invitation.